Well, let's talk a bit more about uh, this 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. We have with us here in the studio the Holocaust survivor, Joan Salter. Uh, Joan's mother managed to get her and her sister uh, onto a boat to the United States during the Nazi occupation uh, of France in 1943, where they were both put into foster care. And I'm also joined by Olivia Marks Waldman, who's chief executive of the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. Thank you very much for both of you for being with us. Joan, let's talk to you first of all about your remarkable life story. You were born uh, Fanny Zimmetbaum in Brussels in 1940 to Polish Jewish parents. You were just three months old, I think, when the Nazis invaded Belgium. Yes, yes. And my parents, being Polish Jews, uh, it was the Pole, the foreign Jews that were target first. My father was taken, and he was actually deported, probably to Auschwitz, and he did escape. However, we did parallel journeys. My mother was able to return with us to Paris where my parents had actually lived most of their adult life. And uh, she had to go every week to the, the French police, not the Nazis, it was the French police. We had to go every week to register. And it was July 1942 uh, when we went to register and uh, the policeman warned my mother up until then, they had not been deporting women and children. And the policeman actually warned my mother that we were due to be rounded up. My mother returned to where we were uh, being hosted by people who were involved with what became known as the Maquis, the French underground. And uh, they managed to smuggle us out, and we were taken down into Vichy, which was not occupied. And my father had escaped. He had managed to also get down there. For a little while, we were together. And then, uh, even though Vichy was not occupied, they began again rounding up the men, and my father was put into an internment camp. And uh, again, he escaped, and he managed to get across the Pyrenees. He sent the guide back to get us. And, <clears throat> uh, but unfortunately, because my mother had two young children, and by that time, there were a lot of uh, Gestapo in the mountains, and it was dangerous. They waited until they had some airmen, which were being repatriated, to carry us over the mountains. And we were captured at the border, but we were captured by the Spanish police, and we were allowed in. My sister was put in a convent. My mother and I were in prison, and the expectation was that Spain would be occupied, and by that time, there was nowhere left to run. And the Quakers were the relief organization. Ameri when the children were rounded up in Paris in July, the Vichy government actually offered free, safe passage to any of the children that any country would take them, mm -hmm. and nobody would. However, the Americans, by November 42, sent a ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother did give us up, thinking, you know, that was the only way to save us. And I was barely three and a half by the time. That was June 1943. Uh, my sister was actually my half-sister. Mm -hmm. She had a different surname. So in America, we were separated. I was fostered. My name was changed to Joan. And my language was changed. And my past was wiped out. And I was seven years old when I came home from school one day to be told that uh, I was part of this thing that had happened. Although nobody spoke about the Holocaust then. I'm talking about 1947. I was put on a plane, came to England to my family. My parents were completely destroyed by everything that happened. My mother was one of eight adult children and all my aunts, uncles, and cousins had died in the Holocaust. And uh, it, 
you know, people say, oh, we were lucky, but, you know, mm. it, the Holocaust still affected us all our lives, yeah. Um, Joan, thank you so much. What, what an extraordinary story. And Olivia, j just talk to us as we remember 75 years on from the liberation, how, how the Holocaust and the war just shattered so many, I mean, left so many people mm. dead, of course, but shattered families like Jones. Shattered families, it destroyed almost entire communities in many respects, and it's left behind loss on an almost unimaginable mm. scale. Of course, loss for mm. individuals and for families, but loss to universal culture. And it, and it threatened what we think of as civilized society, we are all left with, uh, with a shaken belief in what we think of as civilized society. Mm. How important is it that we remember, um, we heard in that report there, a, a call to remember on the mm. 75th anniversary. How important is it? Because as time goes on, um, I suppose the temp, you know, it's inevitable in a way that, that people start to forget perhaps some of the details of the horror of what happened. Well, as we heard in that clip just now, His Royal Highness spoke so movingly uh, this afternoon in Israel of how the Holocaust is not only a Jewish tragedy but a tragedy for all of us. It, it has universal meaning and implications for everybody. The loss of six million people, not, not just a loss, a deliberate mm. murder, should cause us all to pause and mourn that loss and never be uh, thoughtless about, about that scale of loss. Mm. But we also know that after the Holocaust, genocides have happened since then mm. uh, and continue. There are situations currently, um, such as the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, with a case currently just being heard. And we also know that anti-Semitism didn't disappear after the Holocaust, contrary to what people hoped at the time. We've even seen an increase in anti-Semitism and other forms of identity-based prejudice. That is, prejudice and fear and hostility purely based on someone's faith, anti-Muslim prejudice, sexuality. We know homophobia exists on the streets of, of the UK, sadly. So we all have mm. to understand what can happen if that kind of hostility continues unchecked and becomes normalised? Uh, and Joan, you've told us your incredible life story. What, what are your feelings on this 75th anniversary of the Auschwitz liberation? Do you, do you feel anger about what happened to your family or how your family was shattered, as we've heard? I, I feel very much as Olivia does, that the lessons are so important. And some of the Holocaust has become almost sanitized. And obviously, education has to be age appropriate. But I know some people are very shocked and horrified by the images they're seeing. But that was what the Holocaust was. It shows the depth of deprivation that prejudice can create and how humanity was lost. And so this is why it is important for me, all the intention that is given, because I've seen similar photos of what is happening with the Rohingya. Same thing, the dehumanization, you know, the men having their beards torn off them. And, Do you and think they... in some ways the world has not learned the lessons of the, of the, the Holocaust? Of the... <laughs> No, and unfortunately, uh, prejudice is a very dangerous virus and there's always something in human beings that the other is different, but how quickly we can dehumanise the other. And it's so important not to allow this prejudice, loose words, you know, it mm. is so important. And I think... I am very much in favour of seeing the Holocaust for what it was, not a sanitised version yeah. of it. Okay. Really good to talk to both of you, and, and thank you for that message. I think that's an important one. Thank uh, you. Joan Salter, great to talk to you. Thank and you also very much. Olivia Marks Waldman, Chief Executive of the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. Thank you thank very you. much for coming in. Thank you.